The Chenrezig Institute is a Buddhist retreat, study and monastic centre nestled in the tranquil hills of the Sunshine Coast hinterland in Queensland, Australia. It offers a peaceful place to spend some time experiencing authentic Tibetan Buddhist teachings surrounded by lush tropical rainforests. The Chenrezig Institute mission is, by practicing kindness and wisdom, we can change ourselves for the benefit of others. Established in 1974, the Institute was among the first Tibetan Buddhist centers in the Western world and remains one of the largest. Its origins began with a month-long meditation course, the first of its kind in Australia, it was conducted by Lama Tukta Nyeshe and Lama Zopa Rinpoche in nearby Diamond Valley, Mululaha. This rather barren plot of land became what is now the lush, subtropical environment of the Chenrezig Institute. The centre gets its name from Chenrezig, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. Chenrezig is one of the most beloved figures in the Mahayana Buddhist tradition. He represents the embodiment of the compassion of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in their tireless work for the benefit of all beings. Chenrezig's mantra is, Omani Penmi Hum, and Chenrezig literally translates as, All Seeing and manifests itself in many forms, male and female, and often with many eyes and arms. The Institute is home to a Tibetan teacher, a large number of nuns and monks, and a thriving community of students, volunteers and guests. It provides a range of Buddhist and secular programs through which people's minds and hearts can be transformed for the benefit of all others. Programs include meditation retreats, teachings on Buddhism, advanced study courses, art classes, and workshops on Buddhist psychology and mental well-being. The centre also has various accommodation facilities, a renowned vegetarian cafe, library, the main meditation hall known as the Gumpa, art studios and beautiful grounds, which are all open to the general public from Tuesday to Sunday every week. Aside from the impressive Gumpa, there is the Garden of Enlightenment, also known as the Memorial Gardens of Stupas. These eight stupas represent the eight great deeds of the Buddha's life and are constructed on the roof of a large shrine building surrounded by beautiful ornamental gardens. The shrine building is a work of art itself with 108 prayer wheels adjoining the outside and various internal rooms, one housing the permanent Chenrezig Mandala. The Chenrezig Institute is affiliated with the FPMT, the Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana Tradition. The FPMT is an international, non-profit organisation founded in 1975 by Lama Tulpun Yeshi and Lama Zopo Rinpoche. The FPMT is devoted to the transmission of the Mahayana Buddhist tradition and values worldwide through teachings, meditation and community service. It provides integrated education through which people's minds and hearts can be transformed into their highest potential for the benefit of all others. FPMT has 175 centres, projects and services in 36 countries worldwide which are under the spiritual direction of Lama Zobo Rinpoche and the FPMT. Lama Tuk was born in Tibet in 1935, not far from Lhasa. When he was six years old, he received his parents' permission to join Sera Monastery, a college at one of the three great Gelu monastic centres located in the vicinity of Lhasa. This phase of his education came to an end in 1959. As Lama Yeshi himself has said, in that year the Chinese kindly told us that it was time to leave Tibet and meet the outside world. Escaping through Bhutan, he eventually reached northeast India, where he met up with many other Tibetan refugees. Lama Zopa Rinpoche was born in 1946 in a small village in the Sudakumbo region of Nepal, near Mount Everest. Young Zopo Rinpoche began his education in Sulukumbu in the traditional Tibetan manner. While still a young boy, Zopo Rinpoche was then taken by his uncle on a pilgrimage to Tibet. He arrived at the Dunkar Monastery where he began his studies before moving to the Sera Monastery in Lhasa. His education would have continued at the Sera Monastery, but these plans were also interrupted in 1959. Eventually he found his way to Buxador in northern India where he first became the disciple of Geshe Repton and then Lama Yeshe. Lama Yeshe and Zopa Rinpoche's contact with Westerners began in 1965, while they were visiting the Groom Monastery in the town of Jialing in the state of West Bengal, India. An American woman, Zina Ratchvatsky, who had come in search of teachings eventually met Lama Yeshe. From this unusual first meeting a strong friendship grew and the Lama spent nearly a year teaching her at home before Zina had to leave Xialing for Ceylon. 
When she returned to India, the three of them visited the Dalai Lama in Dharamsala. There Zena was ordained as a novice nun, and in 1967, the two Lamas and their newly ordained disciple left India, not for Ceylon, as originally planned, but for Nepal. The three at first resided near the Buldanar Stupa, several miles from Kathmandu. After a few years, however, they were able to purchase land at the top of a nearby hill called Kulpan. There they founded the Nepal Mahayana Gompa Centre in 1969, now known as the Kulpan Monastery. During his lifetime, the Buddha, which means awakened one or enlightened one, gave numerous teachings on how to live a worthwhile human life and train one's mind through meditation. After his passing some 2,500 years ago, his teachings spread widely throughout Asia. From Japan and China in the east, Sri Lanka and Indonesia in the south, Afghanistan in the west, and Korea and Mongolia in the north. For some, Tibetan Buddhism is simply a psychology for living. For others, it's a highly ritualistic religion, and yet others see it as an advanced study of the nature of mind. There is no right or wrong way to approach it. What works for people of one disposition may not work for those of another. In fact, the Buddha himself encouraged us to listen, to contemplate, and to integrate what is useful for them and to discard anything that they do not find useful. As Lama Yeshi put it, learning meditation or studying Buddhism is learning about you, your own nature. The subject is about your own mind. Learning meditation or Buddhism does not mean learning skeptical doctrine or philosophy. It is a method of how to control the undisciplined mind, which is what we have. So, by learning the characteristic nature of our own undisciplined mind, the control is the nature. Because you understand, through the understanding, you release the emotionally ignorant. It is so important to know the mentality of your own mind, no matter if you are a believer or not a believer, if you are religious or not religious, if you are a Christian or if you are a Hindu, or if you are from the East or the West. To know your own mind is very, very important.